if someone tells you to hold your horses, or if you've been running around like a headless chicken, you may even be asked to keep your eyes peeled. Yes, these idioms and many more can often sound rather disgusting, bemusing, confusing, and well, quite funny actually. Yes, idioms in English are really, really varied. We've got idioms connected to animals, to disgusting things, and to just weird objects in general, like the kitchen sink. Now, as frustrating as it can be to learn these idioms, it is also great fun once you get there and understand them, because this is a great way to boost your English level instantly. Using idiomatic expressions like the 20 I'm going to share with you in just a minute will help you sound a lot more natural and native in English and, importantly, help you understand native English speakers. So, are you ready? Let's get on with the lesson. Okay, hold your horses. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button and of course the notifications bell so that you are notified when we upload new lessons. You can of course follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Check us out there for more English expressions, idioms and to learn a little bit more about Sabra and me. Right, so hold your horses. Did you understand that expression from the context in which I used it? If you guess that it's something like wait, then you are correct. Essentially, hold your horses doesn't literally mean hold your horses. No, it means slow down, wait a moment. Right, hold your horses. I am not paying for dinner. You said it was your turn. Right, hold your horses. I am not ready yet. We can go out in half an hour. Now, number two, staying with the theme of animals, an elephant. An elephant in the room. If someone says we're avoiding the elephant in the room, then essentially you are avoiding a problem that everyone is aware of, but no one really wants to or knows how to deal with it. Everyone is refusing to talk about this problem. For example, we can't carry on in this relationship. I want to get married and you don't. I think it's time we address the elephant in the room. When you address something, it means you face it and deal with it. So an extra little bit of vocab for you there. Now, number three, everything but the kitchen sink. Everything but the kitchen sink. This is referring to everything imaginable, even the unnecessary things. So often we would say when someone is packing for a holiday, maybe has a very large case or even two, you're only going away for a weekend. It looks like you're packing everything but the kitchen sink. So everything, including unnecessary things, things you probably won't need. What did you buy at the supermarket? It looks like you've got everything but the kitchen sink. Right, number four, to keep your eyes peeled. Now, we usually refer to peel, the verb, when we talk about carrots or apples, removing the skin. So this potentially could sound a little bit disgusting. So essentially, we're not asking you to peel your eyes. Ooh, no but to basically pay attention, to look out for something. Right, the street we need to turn down is just coming up, so keep your eyes peeled. Now, on the same theme as eyes, eyeballs. To be up to your eyeballs in something. Now, essentially, this means that you have too much of something, more than you want. So often we would use this expression when talking about work, I am up to my eyeballs in emails. I can't believe how many people email me in one week while I'm on holiday. You can also use it to talk about daily life. I am up to my eyeballs in dirty laundry. I've got so much washing to do. Now, if someone wants to pick your brain, no, they are not a zombie. They simply want to know your opinion, what you think on a subject, the knowledge you have on something particular. Do you mind if I pick your brain about this new project? I just want to get your opinion on a few things. I want to know what you think. Maybe you want to pick my brain about grammar or pronunciation. In fact, a lot of you do in the comments section below. So, in fact, why not ask me a question about idiomatic expressions? Is there an idiom in English that you would like to pick my brain over? Let me know, comment below. Now, number seven. If you make a lot of effort doing something, 
particularly if you're doing something for someone else to make them happy. Perhaps you want to invite your mother-in-law for dinner and you clean the house and you cook and you make everything perfect, buy her flowers. You're bending over backwards for her. Bending over backwards. Now, if you imagine bending over backwards, it's pretty uncomfortable, unless you're particularly good at yoga. So when you bend over backwards for someone or doing something, you're making a massive effort, working very, very hard. So when was the last time you bent over backwards for somebody and did they appreciate it? Now, number eight, I have to say I'm pretty good in the mornings. Usually I'm quite bright, breezy, awake, happy, especially after a coffee. But some people, they just always wake up the wrong side of the bed. Yes, to wake up the wrong side of the bed is bizarre. It's strange because there really isn't a right or a wrong side to get out of the bed. But essentially it means that someone has woken up in a bad mood. They're not particularly happy. They're grumpy. They're miserable. Maybe they didn't get a good night's sleep. Or maybe it's just how they are in the mornings. Right, guys, the boss seems to have gotten up out of the wrong side of the bed. So I suggest avoiding him for the first hour this morning. We'll try plying him with some coffee and see if that helps. Now, number nine, teeth. We've gone away from eyes and we're now thinking about these things. By the skin of your teeth. By the skin of your teeth. Now, the origins are actually biblical. I won't get into them now, but it's a pretty old expression. Essentially, it means narrowly, barely, or by a small margin. So, just about. For example, she passed that exam by the skin of her teeth. It was only two marks off a of fail. So when you get through something by the skin of your teeth, you've essentially just about avoided something or done something. Now, a strange expression. Just check a minute. Yeah, um, wet behind the ears. If you describe someone as being wet behind the ears, then essentially you are saying they're immature and inexperienced. Now, this actually comes from farm animals, from when a lot of animals are born in their amniotic fluid. A bit gross, okay? They're all wet and gooey. But the mummy will lick them, make sure they're clean, but they usually miss their ears. So their ears, the back of them, are quite wet. This is just a bizarre expression, but you get the idea. It's referring to a baby animal, an inexperienced, immature baby animal, wet behind the ears. So what do you think about the new girl at work? Lovely, but a bit wet behind the ears. I don't think she's ever had a job before. Now, number 11, a wet blanket, a wet blanket, Again, you can see I'm trying to somehow connect these idioms. Uh, essentially, if you describe someone as being a wet blanket, they are boring. They create a situation where everyone's having fun and then they do something to make it a lot less fun. Essentially, we're referring to a wet blanket putting out a fire or flames of some sort. So this is someone who dampens, who makes wet everyone's enthusiasm or excitement for something. They were all celebrating his birthday, but she came in and was a real wet blanket. Just sat there sulking all day. I think she wanted the attention. Now, number 12, this is pretty horrid. And if any of you are vegetarian, this probably justifies why. To run around like a headless chicken. Yes, the thought of a chicken without a head is not particularly nice. And especially as they're running around. Now, apparently, some of you guys can let me know if this is correct. When a chicken has its head chopped off, it will still run around for a short time. Um, yeah, grim, but anyway, <laughs> you get the idea how ridiculous it is. We use this figuratively, not literally, to say that someone is running around doing lots of things in a very disorganized way. It's a bit chaotic. They're not being particularly efficient or effective. I have been trying to get this party organized, but honestly, I feel like I'm running around like a headless chicken. No one is helping. Now, number 13, you can thank my mother for this, to run around like a blue ass fly. Now, clearly I'm using the word ass, so it's probably not going to be very formal. None of these idioms really are, but I would say that this is a little bit more informal than the rest. It's essentially the same thing as to run around like a headless chicken. To run around like a blue ass fly means you are exceptionally busy. You're in a state of frenzied activity. You have got so much to do and so little time. Just imagine a fly buzzing around your room. It really does seem like it's doing something and nothing and just crazy and chaotic. So very similar to running around like a headless chicken, to run around like a blue ass 
fly. I have been running around like a blue ass fly all day and I don't think I've got anything done. I've still got to do the food shopping, pick the kids up, get their homework done, get them into bed, get them bath, cook the dinner. Oh my goodness. Number 14, a bull, male cow, in a china shop. A bull in a china shop. Now China is the uh, like teacups and saucers that we would refer to, um, a kind of posh plateware. Plateware? Yeah, let's say plateware. Okay, and imagine a bull in a shop of this. Yes, there'd be a lot of breakage, a lot of things smashing, crashing on the floor. So when we refer to somebody being a bull in a china shop or going in like a bull in a china shop, they are not being very subtle. Someone who is very careless in the way they move or behave. It doesn't literally have to be about breaking things. It could be about being insensitive and upsetting people. So being very clumsy and not very tactful in dealing with sensitive situations. Honestly, she always comes into the meeting like a bull in a china shop, just blurts out her idea and dismisses everybody else's. She really doesn't have much tact, meaning ability to be sensitive and delicate in certain situations. Monkeys and monkey business. Okay, now in this case, we're referring to kind of the playfulness of monkeys. So when we refer to monkey business, we're referring to this exact thing, shenanigans, naughty behavior, but fun. So for example, the boys have been very quiet this afternoon. I wonder what monkey business they're getting up to. So being mischievous. Potentially, this could even be behaving in an illegal manner. But often it is just referring to children behaving as children do. Number 16, and I bet you've heard this one before and it really is a funny one. The best thing since sliced bread. Apparently, a long time ago when the sliced bread machine was invented, everyone thought it was amazing. And I'm guessing this is everyone in the UK because we do like our sandwiches. So when we say the best thing since sliced bread, we could be serious. We could be saying something is amazing, fantastic, the best thing you've heard of, or recently at least. Or you could be using it in more of a sarcastic way. Honestly, the way they're behaving, you would think the new girl's the best thing since sliced bread, which is really nothing special. Honestly, the iPhone, I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. Number 17, this is one that I won't often use, but I've definitely come across it. More holes than Swiss cheese. More holes than Swiss cheese. Now, I'm sure Swiss cheese isn't all holy, like that kind of cheese. But when we say there's more holes in something than Swiss cheese, we're saying that it has many faults, many problems, flaws. Wow, that Netflix series has more holes than a Swiss cheese. Seriously, how even did they get together? That just didn't make any sense to me. I've got a bone to pick with you. No, not literally. I'm not going to pick your bones or poke you with one. No. When you say that you've got a bone to pick with someone, it's quite a serious idiomatic expression, meaning you've got an issue you need to raise with them. You've got a problem, something you need to tell them, something that needs to be discussed that's usually pretty serious. Look, I've got a bone to pick with you. You said you were going to pay me back that £10 last week and you still haven't. So when am I going to get my money back? Have you got a friend who, as lovely as they are, might not be as talented as they think in one particular area? Perhaps they think they're a fantastic singer or painter or photographer or even chef. Now, if you've got the kind of relationship where you can talk quite freely and openly and kind of make fun, then you might use the expression, don't give up the day job. Don't give up the day job. So, what did you think of my meal last night? Did you enjoy it? Well, I wouldn't give up the day job if I were you. And finally, fat chance or slim chance? Now, actually there's two opposing adjectives, fat being and slim being the opposite. But essentially, if you say fat chance or slim chance, you're saying that there is a very minute possibility of something happening. He asked me out for dinner the other night. Pff, fat chance, I'm gonna say yes. Now, fat chance is actually going to be a little bit stronger and ruder than slim chance. There is a slim chance that I can make it to the party tonight, but I'll let you know. I'll text beforehand. If you say fat chance, it really sounds quite rude and abrupt. 
So avoid that unless you are talking about somebody crazy inviting you out for dinner. And there we go, 20 idiomatic expressions that are bizarre, strange, and may even have you laughing just from the picture, the imagery that they create. So comment below, try using one or more of those expressions in a context that is personal to you. And of course, if there are any other idioms that you would like me to explain, add those in the comment section too. Thank you for watching. Bye.